My first question would be: The global pandemic has changed the nature and business of companies now. So, how, according to you, is the market evolving around digital? So, the key word here is going to be hybrid as we go forward. When we say hybrid, as an MBA student, look at it from an end-to-end -end supply chain perspective. Where does it start? It starts from the client or the customer. How is the customer buying earlier and today? Second, how are you influencing that buying behavior, which is around how you reach out to the customer from the advertising perspective? If you go down the supply chain, then how is that goods reaching to that customer, which is the logistics part of the supply chain? From there, you come back. How is the goods being built and what is the mechanism by which the manufacturer is controlling and reporting and measuring the production? The manufacturing part of the supply chain is another one. And then once you come back again into one step back is the raw material and the procurement. How is the raw material being procured? So if you look at it from this end to end, Take an example, the, the shift has happened, the customers are now buying, significant amount of their buying is, is through the, the digital channel, as again going to a brick and mortar store. If you go back, which essentially means that the physical advertising modes has to be now in a hybrid model of a mix of digital and, and physical advertising. Similarly, as I said, you, your buying behavior has changed, you're influencing the customer's buying behavior has changed. Then you come back to the logistics part. If it does not matter that the goods needs to be physically present at the store next to your house, then the whole supply chain of the logistics is very different because it doesn't matter where the goods is. Once you procure it through a digital channel, how the supply chain finds the most optimal location of the product and then brings it to you at the shortest time and at the shorter at the minimal cost it's an optimization engine there how does it procures or gets that material from the right uh, store to you or right location to you so you see so everything is becoming what they call hybrid enabled by digital the key thing for, at least from my perspective, from an, uh, as an MBA student is, do I understand the nuance of the difference of the physical versus the digital? And what do I need to do differently for me to differentiate in each of these supply chain steps for me to be successful in telling my clients that this is how their supply chain should work? As an MBA student, I should be able to say, this is how you did it earlier. This is how you should do it now. And why you, me, are the best person to be telling them what should be the future goal. That's the way I see it. the word you remember. It's the hybrid supply chain, which is going to make a difference. All right, sir. So my next question would be, how are the companies embracing this digital technology shift that happened in a post-pandemic world? And how do you think the students should be prepared with this digital impacting skill set that is required? So you have to, you have to look at this question from an a industry lens. Uh, it's, it's almost impossible to give that answer from um, if you because the responses of each industry is very very different so once you look at it from an industry lens immediately you will see the nuances of how each and every industry is responding to this to this change take for example the telco is a, is the, is probably the biggest uh, one of the biggest uh, change what we are we are seeing is once you move into digital bandwidth and your ability to reach the customers 
becomes extremely important. How do you reach the customers? Through the telco network. If the telco network is not designed for that kind of volume and for that kind of um, reach, so you need, need both the capacity and the spread of telco. So the majority of the investments now which is happening in the telco world is a rapid ramp up of capacity and rapid ramp up of reach, again, which is enabled by technology. So technology is going to play a significant role in one industry if you look at it from a telco perspective. What you will see here is a convergence of industry and this industry convergence will require all these industries to work together towards a solution. So the two key words is emergence of industry specific nuances and technological advances and then convergence of these industries to provide specific solutions which are digitally enabled. What's it in an MBA solution, MBA as an MBA student for you? You should be able to visualize, you should be able to articulate, you should be able to understand the future needs of where the, uh, the needs of the customers are going to be. Design those use cases and then bring those to this, these, those innovative use cases to your companies and say, build a solution around it because that's where you will make money. And that's, that's the future of digital technology. Your ability to visualize new solutions, new use cases. Why should the management students have a deep understanding of the role of digital technologies? A one-line answer is, it enables you to ask the right question. Okay, let me, let me give us a good simile around this. When a cricket match happens, there are 100, and 100 crore people, Indians, sitting there and saying Sachin Tankar or, or Virat Kohli or somebody, he, did, he didn't do this, his bat speed was higher, his footwork was slower and no. But you ask the second question to that person, you are, okay, you are saying bat speed was higher. Why do you think your bat speed was, should, should have been lower? You will not get an answer. Because that person has no clue beyond that one comment. If you bring it back to a industry situation now, that you are going and meeting a client and you are suggesting a fantastic use case of a new, uh, new product of how it should be sold okay, or a new service. And then the CIO of, or your client says, okay, brilliant. Now, Please tell me, in my, I have an IT system, how will it work there? And you will say, oh, I'm sorry, I'll have to go and get somebody for you. What will happen is, after, next time, he or she, if I'm the CIO, I would like to talk to that person rather than you. So the question is, do you want to stay relevant? We are not asking you to an MBA student to be an architect. That's not the one. You should have an architect very, very deep who will provide that kind of a depth. But you should be able to take a business problem and be able to hold a technical conversation for maybe about half an hour with the CIO at a strategic level and then be candid enough to go back and say, I will get you the right set of architect who will design the architecture for you and and that person will talk to your architect and come back to us with a solution. So just to summarize, it is all about you staying relevant and you being asking the right set of questions. Remember, do not spend time to be an architect because you will you will not be able to match that. You will neither be here nor be there. We get a bottom once in a century. We get a couple day once in a century. You don't get couple days every 10 years. So don't try to be a couple day or a bottom.
So where do you see the future of this digital transformation and how do how should students become competent enough to pervade with the any of the alterations that come ahead? So remember there was digital has been in, in vogue for a long long time, right? But it has suddenly gained tremendous uh, traction maybe in the last four to five years uh, roughly. What you have to keep in mind is not about how you build skills for digital. You have to keep track of what are the technologies which are coming up in the next three to five years, which will decide what is the next digital two to three years from now, because your career is starting. So until and unless you keep track, for example, I'm just taking some example. Is it AI which is going to come? Is it blockchain which is going to come? Is it cryptocurrency which is going to come? I don't know. It is all debatable. But you as MBA students, you have to take a call that these are the three or four technologies which you think and can change. That's okay. It's not a static answer. That these are the three or four technologies which are going to evolve in the next few years and then what is the future of digital? The future of digital is what will determine what you want to focus on. So digital in the next three to five years, while you get to industry, you'll be okay. But until unless you start planning for post digital era, you will not succeed. So my only um, summarize, if, if I may summarize an answer to this question is, Keep transforming yourself. Keep reading. Keep understanding the future trends. You will see a lot of good reports from analysts and also companies from us who give five to ten year roadmaps of future technologies. Keep abreast of those and keep educating, updating your knowledge to stay relevant. Again, it's all about staying relevant. Keep transforming. Keep reading. Keep educating but stay ahead, one generation ahead of where today's technology is. That will keep you relevant. And that's, to me, is the is summary of uh, what I would like to communicate to the student community here.